How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be talking to you about slow motion. Yeah. So before we get into anything, you do not have to have the most expensive camera in the world to shoot slow motion. You could have a crop sensor at DSLR, you could have a GoPro, you could have your cell phone, you could have anything that has manual settings, essentially. My camera has the capability to shoot at 120 frames per second, which is very slow motion. And most crop sensors will have about 60 frames per second. I know that the GH4 has the capability to shoot 96 frames per second, but what does that all mean? The first thing that we're gonna understand is frame rate. So the standard US format for shooting is 24 frames per second or 23.976, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Where in Europe it's 25 frames per second, which makes a lot more sense. And I'm gonna tell you why in a second. My camera has the capability to shoot in 120 frames per second, but I export on a 24 frames per second timeline. So if you take 120 and you divide it by 24, you get five. And that's how many times slower the footage is gonna appear on your timeline. 96 divided by 24, that's gonna give you four times slower. And 60 divided by 24 is gonna give you two and a half times slower. It's really not as complicated as it sounds. A lot of Canon, a lot of Sony, the, uh, the crop sensors, the Rebel series cameras, most of them are gonna be able to shoot in 60 frames per second. And you can slow that down to that's gonna be a 40% of the original speed, which is gonna give you a pretty cool cinematic look to it. The thing that you have to keep into consideration is your shutter speed. So your shutter speed should always be double of what your frame rate is. So if you're shooting in 24 frames per second, your shutter should be at 50. If you're shooting in 60 frames per second, it should be at 120 or 125, whatever your, your camera's capable of. And for 120, it'll be 250, or if you can do 240, which probably, probably not 250, or the closest thing that your camera's gonna allow. So we've shot the footage. Now let's bring it into the computer and see how we're gonna slow it down. So what we have here is three different clips at three different frame rates. So the first one right here is at 60, this one is gonna be at 120, and this one is gonna be at 24. So we've just imported the 60 frames per second clip. Now let's see what it looks like. So it's a pretty quick clip, it's about two seconds, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down Alt to duplicate this, drag it out, right click, speed and duration, and then type in 40%, because we know that it's shot at 60 frames and 60 divided by 24 is 2.5, and that means that it's 2.5 times slower than normal, which would be 40% speed. So now let's play it through and see how that looks. So that looked already looked a lot better. So here's the normal. So even that is an example for how much more dynamic uh, slow motion can make literally anything. So now I've got an even shorter clip here that was shot at 120 frames per second and I'll play it through. So a pretty quick clip, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the speed and duration to 20%. Since this was shot at 120 frames per second, we take 120 divided by 24, you get five times slower, which in result gives you 20% speed. So let's play it through at five times slowed down. So I'm from a little over one second to like a six second clip. So this is before, that's after. You can take a one second little clip and turn it into like a six second usable clip for your film. That's gonna look super dope. So this clip was shot at 24 frames. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at it at 40% speed. So here it is. Super, super, super choppy. So as you can see, this isn't smooth. This doesn't enhance the footage. It just slows it down and looks really bad. 
So once you understand this concept and can apply it into your real life, then your footage is gonna look so much better and everything that you do in the future kind of changes. <laughs> like there's like there's like me me as a filmmaker before I discovered slow motion and me as a filmmaker after. And there is just a huge, huge, huge jump in quality. A GoPro has this capability, DSLR, anything that you have at home, or you could also invest in a camera. Do your research, make sure that camera has everything that you want and get out there and go shoot. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.